Hello, I'm Dr. Jeremy Bernstingle, the Managing Director of Regenesis Europe. On behalf of the entire company, I'd like to talk to you about what you should know about the biological degradation of petroleum hydrocarbons. Petroleum hydrocarbons, often in the form of gasoline and diesel fuel, are available on almost every corner of most cities and are transferred over millions of miles of pipelines on every developed continent. But of course, underground tanks and piping are highly variable in age, condition and quality, and this leads to a significant number of leaks and failures every year. Whilst we hear of catastrophic spills from time to time, and these are always headline worthy, the total hydrocarbon losses from such spills have been suggested to be relatively insignificant, although not locally of course, when compared to cumulative losses from failing infrastructure. As a result, petroleum hydrocarbons from leaking pipes and tanks enter the underlying soil and groundwater with the potential of creating significant environmental hazards on a great number of small and large sites. Fortunately, however, natural systems have their own assimilatory mechanisms and the misplaced hydrocarbons can be treated and broken down through now well-documented, naturally occurring biological degradation processes. Conveniently for the remediation engineer, hydrocarbon degrading microorganisms are pretty much ubiquitous in the natural environment. The intrinsic energy content of hydrocarbons that makes them such good fuels for us equally makes them an attractive growth substrate to a wide microflora. Naturally occurring soil bacteria preferentially utilize oxygen to degrade the hydrocarbons as a food source through a process known as aerobic biodegradation. Once a spill or leak of hydrocarbons impacts the subsurface, these microbes go to work, rapidly degrading the pollutants until the available oxygen is depleted, which it soon is. Without an adequate ongoing supply of oxygen, aerobic biodegradation then shuts down, forcing the natural environment into a less active, oxygen depleted or anaerobic state. Without oxygen, biological hydrocarbon degradation progresses at rates that are significantly slower, typically by orders of magnitude, 10 to 100 times perhaps, if indeed it proceeds at all. The system essentially stagnates, rather like a pond without oxygen, to give a surface water example. With oxygen as a key limiting factor to aerobic biodegradation, it seems fitting to take a look at the different ways oxygen may be delivered into the subsurface by a remediation engineer. Now this is one of those things which at first might seem easy, but then in practice proves to be a lot harder. One of the earliest approaches, for example, was pumping or sparging of atmospheric air captured at the surface into the contaminated subsurface groundwater. The process involves the use of a mechanical system and delivers a maximum of 20% oxygen per volume of air into the groundwater. This approach, however, has largely been abandoned as it was found that as air was delivered, bubbles formed in the subsurface that would become trapped between soil particles, blocking the formation and causing preferential channeling and short-circuiting of the introduced air, significantly limiting the radius of influence of the delivery well. Additionally, microbial buildup or biofouling around the wells often restricted gas delivery, and then to crown it all, reduced iron within the previously anaerobic system would re-oxidize, precipitating out of solution again and further clogging the formation around the sparge points. The use of pure oxygen delivered via special diffuser nozzles has also been attempted, However, this shares many of the same problems. Inadequate distribution of the oxygen in the subsurface, biofouling, and high costs of capital and operation and maintenance has limited the utility of this approach in most aquifers other than sandy, fast-moving systems. An alternative approach specifically designed to overcome these problems was developed in 1994 in the form of an advanced chemical technology called Oxygen Release Compound, or ORC. This unique approach utilizes a solid powder-like material that can be mixed with water and then either mixed into saturated soils or directly injected into the contaminated subsurface. Within the aquifer environment, the ORC material steadily releases molecular oxygen over a period of nine to 12 months at a broadly linear rate. This linear release profile is critical. 
Too fast a release rate can lead to losses of oxygen to atmosphere and early expiry of the injected product with a consequent requirement for repeat injections, whereas too slow a release rate can lead to insufficient oxygen to meet the system's demand. The controlled oxygen release of ORC is achieved through a patented technology available only in oxygen release compound manufactured by Regenesis and provides a long-term source of the oxygen to the subsurface at a rate conferring optimal efficiency for biodegradation of a range of petroleum hydrocarbons, including both gasoline and diesel fuel. The principal advantages conferred by the patent are that less ORC material is needed to achieve a given target than would be possible without the controlled release, and perhaps of greater benefit to the project cost, fewer fieldwork mobilizations are needed also. Regenesis, the global leader in advanced technologies for groundwater and soil remediation, provides a range of patented injectable compounds which are specifically designed to enhance naturally occurring biological remediation processes. Regenesis maintains a highly qualified staff of scientists, engineers, geologists and chemists to support environmental professionals in selecting and applying appropriate technologies for enhanced bioremediation. For more information or a free technology applicability consultation, visit regenesis.com or call 949-366-8000.